So I would start slowly with the mobility work. I would do five to 10 minutes every single day, see how that feels. If that feels good, then you can add another session uh, to the day. Um, but start with one a day, five to 10. And you're not trying to like go crazy with it because what will happen, what can happen is if you get sore from the mobility work and then you go play the drums, your risk of injury goes up. So start real slow, but that Prime Pro has got some yeah. great- Real light intensity. Um, gotcha. Because then eventually, once you create these rituals and habits of just doing this continuously, um, you, you could get into something like uh, with the rice bucket drills where you know, you're know you kind of moving sand, moving rice around uh, and, and getting a lot of that articulation out of your fingers, your wrists, uh, just to build even more strength with a little bit of resistance. Yeah. All right, here's today's giveaway, MAPS Power Lift. Okay, one of you is going to get free access to that program. Here's how you can do it. Leave a comment below the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe and turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Power Lift. Also, big sale this month. We put together a new bundle, MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, MAPS Anywhere. All three of them combined would retail for $361. Not right now, though. $99.99 and you get access to all three for life. So if you're interested, go to mapsapril.com. Here comes the rest of the show. All right. So food quality matters most in this order, fats, proteins, and then carbohydrates. Oh, I can't hear, wait to hear this one. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, food quality, right? We hear a lot about that. Um, the, how do, yeah. How do you, the fats, types of protein, fats, carbs, then protein, you got no, your fat, essentials first, fats, proteins, and then carbs. So we hear a lot about quality, right? Um, make sure your food is well sourced and what types of carbs you eat you know, matter, what types of proteins, what types of fats. But um, there definitely is a hierarchy of, of difference. And, and we see this in studies, right? We see in studies that if you eat a low calorie diet, that a lot of the negative effects of the types of foods you eat get negated simply because you're in a calorie deficit. Now, the biggest impact is on carbohydrates. Lots of sugar, not a lot of sugar, starches, slow burning carbs, you know, faster burning carbs. It, it doesn't make that huge of a difference mm -hmm. when the calories are low because ultimately carbohydrates, whether they're, you know, long chain, short chain, get turned into glucose by the body. And insulin sensitivity tends to be much better when your calories are low. So that doesn't change a whole lot. Um, now, if the calories are high, then it starts to make a big difference. Fats make a difference regardless. Mm. Because fats vary greatly in their fatty acid profile, uh, that even if you have a low calorie diet, eating like a lot of trans fats, for example, can cause lots of problems because your body takes those, those fatty acids and then it literally uses them to build or to store things in your body. And then the same thing with proteins, uh, although not quite as important, still important especially if you're not eating a ton of protein, then it makes a big difference. Is it animal protein? That's the most optimal. And then second, of course, would be your plant now, how is, now Fats how is, deliver nutrients probably the best. Yeah, and they could, they're inflammatory even in low calories if they're if they're out of balance or if you eat lots of trans fats, for example. Is that true? So I, that's, that was my question was, okay, so if we were in a calorie deficit, does it really make that difference if it's unsaturated, saturated, or trans fats? Yeah, so uh, it does. Uh, it does make somewhat of a difference. Now, low calorie helps a lot, right? But because the fats literally are what are stored in your body and become a part of your body, it does make a big difference. For example, they show that lots of uh, vegetable oils and seed oils, even in low calorie diets, you see more inflammation. You see more things like skin cancers and issues, uh, where you know nervous system issues and stuff like that. Things that fats are very important for. Mm -hmm. um, proteins also, right? Proteins are made up of amino acids, so some proteins have a better amino acid profile than others. Carbohydrates. Look, if your calories are are aren't too high, sugars or starches or you know uh, glycemic index, you know high, low carbohydrates. It all gets turned into glucose, and mm -hmm. at that point, it's more of an individual variance. Sugar makes me feel this way. Starches make me feel that way. It affects my digestion, but old, but really doesn't make as big of a difference as it does with fats. I've always liked using carbohydrates as, as the flexibility macronutrients. Yeah, same. So, yeah, so that way, if 
if my energy, I can kind of taper the amount based off of like how I feel performance wise or energy or, you know, what, whatever it is in terms of like uh, the overall feel of, of um, you know, my energy for the day. Yeah, you know, totally. Behaviorally speaking though, I would make the case that carbohydrates are the harder one to control out of the three of those. So the priority uh, or prioritizing the, the better choices of carbohydrates, I think would, would push it up into a higher the hierarchy of of what what is best or what should I focus on most, right? Mm. Like I know we make the case all the time about protein and, and making sure you're getting that. And I think that's that's good good advice. But now, would you say that's first though? Like yeah, when you, when you're talking to a client, are you saying first <laughs> change your carbs, or you're saying first hit your protein? Always, I'm going to say hit your protein. Right. So, but that that would put protein over fat though, and you said yeah. fat first. No, because you know why? Yeah, I'm curious about that because we've said that a few. times. You know why? If you think protein. about that, if you think about that. In, na in natural sources, whole natural f sources, proteins almost always come. It's paired with fat. Yes. Sure. Very rarely are, are people eating Well, and that's also fats. why I normally focus on protein because naturally they're just going to get yes, the fat. Yes. So that just kind of comes. So from I, a coaching standpoint. But that's why sense. I feel, and, then, and so from a behavioral and from a coaching standpoint, I'm going to, I would potentially put protein first, Fat second because I think fat are just going to come come naturally in yes. that conversation and saying, hey, yeah. if you're if I if I tell you just to go after your protein and mm -hmm. and and focus on that and not even be really picky, like just go get good whole natural sources yes. of it and you know, hey, have some red meat every once in a while. I don't care if you have a tri tip every now and then. Even enjoy yeah. a little bit of sausage and things like that. I don't care that so much as you get your protein intake, it'll take care of itself on the fat side. Don't go outside of that and go look for it other places where like where you're going to get yeah. trans fat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I would put protein as number one, fat as second. But then I, the thing I don't like about making carbs kind of like, oh, they're not that big of a deal is that when you think behaviors with your clients, that's what gets abused probably more than all three. Yeah, I'm you glad get you said in a that. Pinch with that a lot of times. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that because I don't want to. I don't want to confuse people like, oh, it doesn't matter. Right. Right. No, no, that's not what I mean. I mean in just an order of importance. But when you look at uh, snack foods, processed foods, foods that come in boxes and wrappers, they tend to be carbohydrate based. Right, they tend to have most things be, are carbohydrate heavy. Yeah, they tend to be made with corn or whey or or, or wheat um, or rice, right? Because it's cheap, it's easy, it's got a long shelf life. And then what they'll do is they'll add things to make it more palatable. So cutting out heavily processed foods usually means you're also cutting out a lot of carbohydrates um, out of your diets. Like there's not a lot of there's more now than ever, right? Heavily processed fat and protein containing foods, but that's because the popularity of like low carb diets. But it's not even close. Like you go down the aisles of the grocery store, yeah. it's like carb heavy, carb heavy. So it makes what you're saying makes makes perfect yeah, sense. Yeah. But like when it comes to quality, you know, if somebody's, in other words, we know this, right? Hierarchy, right? All right, calories first, macros second, then quality kind of third. When you get to that quality point, when your macros are good, your calories are pretty good, I would say look at the meat quality. That's where it makes the biggest difference first, right? Mm -hmm. You know, grass fed meats a little bit better fatty acid profile, make sure you have some fish in there for those omega threes. Um, if you are adding fats, you know, nuts tend to be really good. Olive oil is always really good to add. And then when you get to your carbohydrates, I always tell my clients this, like eat your carbs at the end of your meal. Yeah. You tend to eat less of them anyway. It's not essential. Um, and if you stick to whole natural sources of carbohydrates, are there bad sources of carbs? Not, not really. Right. If it's whole and natural, it's typically, what would you have? White rice, fruit, yeah. uh, potato, it's usually okay, right? Yeah. Usually people aren't eating a bowl of honey, which even then is still I think in that okay. context it's fair to say that. I yeah. think if you if you preface it with, you know, we were talking about calories and macros yes. and then quality. And then now that we're talking about quality, then you could put that because then the other two things are taken care of. So yes. if you assume the other things are taken care of first and then we're having that conversation and you're breaking it down that way, then I could see going at that angle. Yeah. If I have a client where I'm just starting off though, I'm going to be very careful about how I communicate their carbohydrate intake because yeah. I know how easily that's abused, uh -huh. behaviorally speaking. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the only place and, where I, I think it's really hard though too in terms of fat to to find quality sources of fat for your average person. Like it's, it's you know, you look at oils, you look at uh, butter, you look at... Uh, uh, avocados, you get options for that. Like, so I think it, it is a bit of a priority to quality wise to really nail that down. Yeah. If you if you eat quality meats, then you're, if you eat quality meats, uh, quality dairy, and you, you're, you're good. If you want to add fats, let's say you want to add a cooking oil, right? Uh, olive oil is phenomenal. Well, you want to, maybe you want to cook, you want to add a different kind of cooking oil for baking or something like butter, 
uh, coconut oil. You know, these are all kind of natural uh, sources of oil that don't require ridiculous amounts of processing. Um, then you're doing you're you're doing okay. But if you start with those quality meats, you're okay. And then as far as like you know a hierarchy of of things, you know I've got I've had a lot of success just telling clients, hey, let's avoid heavily processed foods. And then the other stuff tends to fall in order with with people. Now you're not going to get shredded doing that. At some point, you have to really start to figure things out. But it tends to take care of itself when I tell yeah. people just to do. I that mean, thing. I almost feel that way about fat. Like so, I mean, like we just we we just ordered like we did our. I finally switched up. By the way, my butcher box, right? Oh, top. you went on there. <laughs> yeah, I finally, finally, yeah, I never switched the box. Super I'm, easy, right? Yeah, yeah, and we're and I yeah, we're I, creatures of habit. I changed out the the chicken right now for the uh, fillets and the ribeyes. But you know, here's a perfect example. Like so. You know, Katrina always cooks with olive oil. Uh, we use butter. I mean, we use yeah. butter on vegetables or I'll even put butter on my steak uh, and we'll do grass-fed butter. But I'm not really tracking or paying attention to fat ever. Yeah. I just don't go outside and, and see it. If You're not I, trying I, to eat it. Yeah, I feel like if you if you eat, get your protein intake from whole sources and you don't try and avoid fat. The like, fat follows. Yeah, the fat just kind of, yeah. and, and don't try and add it into the diet. Don't Agreed. go looking for it. Agree. Um, it's that. It's really that simple. Like you'll, it'll, fi it'll find its way. Now where it can get challenging if you're working with someone who's like a vegan who doesn't eat any meats. Yeah. And now they, but we need to get some healthy fats. Now I'm recommending things like almonds and avocados. Yes. Like, and you're starting to do things like that. Totally. Be because that person is not going to get those healthy natural fats through but a normal client who doesn't have any restrictions like that, and I'm teaching them about diet, I'm like, let's focus on protein. Uh, let's make sure it's whole foods. I'm not really worried about fat. It's going to happen. And, and then I'm trying to fillers. titrate their their yeah. carbohydrate choices. Like, yeah. I like I like that with the carbs too because they're just not essential. We can go all the way down to zero and right. you're going to be okay. Or mm -hmm. we could go high depending on performance goals. You brought up a good point with vegans. This is one of the reasons why eating a vegan diet it can be healthy, but it requires much more planning and much more knowledge. With a vegan diet, you have to seek out quality protein, and you have to seek out variety of foods that complement each other to get all the nutrients that you need, and you have to seek out healthy fats because you could very easily be in a fat deficiency or a protein deficiency or a micronutrient deficiency, a B vitamin or an iron, for example, in a vegan diet if you're not paying attention to what's included in the whole diet, but yeah. anyway, so you guys, you guys went fillet and and ribeye. Yeah, that's what we added. Have I you just, tried them both from from butcher? I have, I have. I like I mean, the fillet. Yeah, I, I like the fillet. The fillet is good. I mean, fillet is a leaner meat, so it tastes better that way. Yes. The, the ribeyes aren't up to par as like your fatty ribeye. Just being straightforward, like yes. it's just. I mean, you always have to remind somebody who's eating grass fed that you're 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 making a healthier choice than eating your normal. You know, ribeye steak that you're gonna get at a, at a you know it's, five star. It's restaurant. less fatty. Yeah, it's not gonna be. Super, it's way less fat. Way less. Fatty. Yeah, it, their their ribeyes are are closer to like a sirloin or something like that. It's not. They're just not yeah. as fatty as they are. And now because so, the fillet is leaner, I love it. Yeah, I, I love it because it already nice, kind of tastes like that. Yes. So I agree. The the fillet. Now what I am gonna do different this time, which I haven't done, is I'm gonna try and sous vide it. So I haven't sous vide their meat. Hmm. I'm gonna try and sous vide do it you first, sear it afterwards, and then sear it afterwards. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then maybe I'll do one where I sous vide and then do like a Traeger. So I'll, I'll, I'll mess around with We him. do a lot of their tri-tips, a lot of the tri-tips. And my son is a fanatic for tri- Literally yesterday, I cooked up a couple of the tri-tips. What I do is I, I sear them in, in a cast iron. First, I, I do the whole like salt, olive oil. I put seasoning, sear it, put it in the oven, took it out. And my son already smells it. Oh, papa, papa, papa. I'm like, all right, calm down. Let me get it right. So I cut them and I cut like three- slices like this. Remember, my son is 16 is sixteen months. So yeah. big, three big slices. I'm like, there's no way this kid's going to eat all that freaking meat. Sure enough, I'm giving it to him. I'm like, and I stopped at one point. I'm like, enough. That's it. We're done. He starts crying. Ah. I'm like, oh my God, kid. All right, here you go. Here's some more <laughs> meat. It's a little protein. He I loves had, it, dude. Yeah. I had one of the coolest moments I've had as, as a father, like so far with Max just the other night. So last weekend was the weekend that I had. So Katrina left last week on Thursday. I had him all the way from Thursday to Sunday. Yeah. And Saturday night was my last night with him, right? Because I knew she'd be back on Sunday. And so... I, when I went to bed, I was like, you know what? If he if he tosses and turns, because sometimes he'll get up and then you have to tell him to go back to bed. Sometimes yeah. we have to walk him back to bed and he goes back to bed. Sometimes he'll do that. And he and I told myself, if he does, I'm going to let him get up and he can come sleep with me last night, him and I. Oh, he doesn't cute. cuddle with me. He cuddles with his mom. If he's with if Katrina's in the bed, I don't get no love. Like He wants to be all snuggled up to his mom. So I'm like- So you like, take advantage. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll get one, one night. I'll get to actually cuddle with him. So I let him do that, right? 
Well, I just so happen to be up. I haven't been watching our show in a while, even since we've done the lights. And I'm like, I want to watch a one of our quads, just see how the flow is, what it looks like. And so I'm watching it in bed and um, he wakes up and I'm like, oh shit. So I'm like, well, I said I want it. So I bring him in. I'm like, you know what? Let, I'm just going to see what he does. So I just, I let him lay there with me while I'm on my phone watching. And he just like re rested his head on my chest and watched the, the show. <laughs> and so he watches YouTube and I uses his iPad and stuff like that, but he's never watched Mind Pump before. And he's like, daddy. He's like, oh, yeah, I do it. Keep, there you are. Yeah, yeah, he keeps pointing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's daddy. Then he'd pop his head up. Then he lay back down, but he ended up falling asleep on my chest while I was oh, that's so critiquing great. and watching the show. I was like, oh, that was a really cool. And, and then he slept with me all night and snuggled. Oh, and so man. That yeah. was a cool dad. When moment. Jessica was nice. pregnant with Aurelius, she used to listen to, she would listen to Mind Pump and she would put it on speaker. Yeah. And I don't know if that did anything or whatever, but when the intro comes on or the show comes on, He's like so interested in, in like the show or whatever. No, it's great. Yeah, no, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny. Uh, so I, I, I told you about, um, you know, kind of lifting with the high school kids and whatnot. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> like was hesitant about bringing this up because I didn't have access to the video. I'll probably try and find it. But apparently I was like trying to get more involved and trying to like pump them up and, and just kind of show them, you know, some you examples show them of like, yeah, dude, like, <laughs> like, hey. So I was doing over at press. And I was just, you know, it was just like 225. It was nothing crazy. Yeah. And these kids' that's, minds I, just exploded. Bro, I, that's the most I've ever done, okay? <laughs> yeah. so stop making me feel bad. <laughs> yeah, but, it, you know, it was just kind of a funny thing because I didn't know I was getting videotaped. And I'm just like, you know, getting after it and then going down, like kind of high-fiving them. And, and I guess one of the kids, like, filmed it and then filmed the reaction of all the kids and then put it on, like, Snapchat or uh, no God, way, yeah, TikTok dude. or something. It's going like, viral right yeah, now? Yeah, the... The freaking, the crazy coach, you know, getting after it. So I was like, I got to fire Bro, that. Hold on a second. I got it. I wish I was there. So, yeah. okay. How strong was the strongest kid? Uh, it, for overhead press? Yeah. yeah. So we got up to, it was, it was like, um, I want to say like 155. It wasn't. Oh like, my God. That's pretty strong. Pretty good. For a high school kid. Yeah. That was the, the strongest kid. It was a massive drop off there. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about. Yeah. You know, that's really good. So line, was he a lineman? What was he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's doing that and you're like, eh, I'm going to jump in and, and make it happen. Yeah. Just like, I you bet know, there's, got there's so potential here. here. Here's the thing. Like I just, in it, it's a generational thing, whatever it is. Like they just haven't had clear examples of, what it takes to kind of like, you got to get in a mental space where you're like, yeah. I'm here to, you know, really try harder to, to stack weights. And like, this is my goal is to keep moving it up, yeah. not just come in and do the reps. And, you know, I did what I have to do today. Yeah. It's like, no, let's get intense. Like, I don't know how to like manufacture <laughs> that, you know? So, <laughs> so I started doing it because my coach did that. I didn't realize that. So we started thinking about it. And I'm like, my head coach would just kind of jump in and do a, a set of bench and his veins are popping out of his neck, and he's like doing more than any of us even seen. And it was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going crazy. Now, and I'm like, did it work when you did worked. that? Were yeah. they all super jazzed? Yeah, the, all these kids were talking about it the next day and stuff. And it was it was cool. It was like a total ego fill because I walk into any other gym, everybody's just like, eh, whatever, whatever. Yeah. I won't even post on Instagram. Be like, <laughs> Like there's plenty of people. Well, you know what's cool me. about it is you're not like a, a, you know, you're not a young coach who's 20 or 30 who's showing off to the teenage kids. Like you're an old guy now, bro. I know. So I got and, gray and, hairs and, and old, yeah, an old guy being able to still throw that weight up is very bro, cool. Can I tell you? you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's you guys, cool. You not guys, cool if you're 25, bro. It's so not true. Cool. It's no, always stroke my ego. You, yeah. Hey, you guys know this as as as, as much as I do. For it, when you're a young man, the most impressive dude in the world is the old strong yeah, guy. Yeah, the young you now, strong guy. And, cool. and you now yeah. fall in that category. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're not the douchey 25 year old it's guy like, who's what? showing off to teenagers. You're actually the old guy who yeah. say, "Hey, I guess still got it, bro." So oh, that, I love that. Yeah, it's to a me, totally that's different. That, you're allowed to flex. To me, yeah. I feel like you're allowed okay. to do that uh, because you've earned the right. You're old enough now when everybody else has declined by this age right. that I still got it in me to do that. So I, I if you were 25, some, some I'd be, if you were 25 I would out. be punking you right That's now. What I'm saying. Oh, you yeah. want me to show up and do some pulls? I'm going to pull you in myself. Hey, hey, speaking of football, did you see – Doug? maybe Doug could pull this up because I didn't even get a chance to read deep in the article. It came up in my feed, and I was, oh, I was like, holy shit, The uh, what the NFL is uh, talking about doing. What are what? they doing? Talking about starting their own streaming service. Their own? You know how much that will disrupt? Like, okay, they have yeah. contracts with DirecTV, like cable services, channels. Like, there's so many other 
companies and channels that make tons it, of money. Wasn't ESPN part? Like, uh, ESPN, Fox, uh, DirecTV, they all have massive So they would do their own yeah. and you would pay just for it. Just think about it. For, yeah, just, brilliant. A, just imagine what it would look oh, like. Oh, yeah, direct to the source. Oh, my God. It would be better for the consumer and you would probably wait. Look at planning an NFL plus mobile streaming service. Wow. So, okay. I mean, that's for, the future, bro. For, Everything's okay, for years, I paid for direct TV just so I could get the NFL ticket. I remember and, and I'm that. not the only person to all my friends were the same way. Like we hated direct TV, yeah. but I would pay the stupid monthly fee and then pay the extra $800 a year so I could get all the games. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, think about that. And Many people were like me that were paying for DirecTV just so they could have the because they had the rights to the NFL ticket, and I believe that is up this year, and that's why this conversation is happening. Is if they take all of those those rights back and then do a streaming service, holy oh, shit, that's, that's going to disrupt. disrupt do, you guys, do you guys remember the discussion, especially for fans that don't live in that area anymore? Yep. That's always been a hard thing. Totally, you don't get your your team. Totally. Do you, do you guys remember the discussion we had maybe five or six years ago on the show where we 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 predicted what would happen with all these streaming services? Yeah, and uh, like I think it's gonna be all a cart. We actually had a big de debate. I think Adam, you thought they were all gonna consolidate into one. I did. I thought there would be a company and that would would arrive. Eventually, I think that'll happen. Yeah. I think first, what you see though is this splintering off and all these small streaming services, and then eventually they start to consolidate under big, uh, you know, big. I big do umbrellas. believe that's still gonna happen. I really do. I do think that you're going to see. I think right eventually. now, eventually, yeah. I think right now everybody has seen it, and then there there will be you know your big monsters, probably Amazon, yeah. Google, one of these types of companies will go. Okay, I want to. I want to buy all these streaming services yeah. and then we're going to put it under one umbrella. Yeah. You know, I, th I do think that's, that's, I think eventually that, because I think about how valuable it would be to do a, to a consumer to go like right now, if I want to watch something on HBO, got to go to HBO, got to go to Hulu, got to Netflix. Like how great would it be if you just like search and it goes to the one that you want to watch mm -hmm. and you watch it. So I think at some point it'll end up doing that. Yeah. You already see some of them bundling together and partnering up. Like yeah. it's, it's starting to already kind of happen, mm -hmm. uh, but there's still a lot of these, these ones that have to break off and do their own thing, but great for the consumer. Totally. Yeah. Dude, I got to tell you guys the hilarious story that happened this morning. So I'm, uh, I, I worked out super early this morning. I was at, I was at the, at the gym at like five thirty, because I had to be here at eight a.m. because I was going to get uh, interviewed on a podcast. So I'm over there. I'm working out, do my thing. I had time. Oh, let me do the steam room. Let me do my thing. Whatever. Get in the car, and I'm driving, and then f hella traffic. And I'm like, shit. I better not be late, right? So I start, you know, don't do this at home, kids. Doing the weaving thing, and I start driving like a little bit of an asshole to get here on time. Well, behind me. There's a, uh, what is it? A Dodge charger or whatever. Yeah. Pacing me. And I mean, it's, it's going and it's, and at this point I'm like, oh, this is kind of fun. Anyway, so the CHP or what? this, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Thank was, God. They, they, yeah, they I use know. those cars. So at, at some point this car gets, starts to get really aggressive, goes around me and starts going in front. So now I start going and they're cutting me off and I'm like this mother, right? So I pull up next to this car. I want to see who's in there. Yeah. Old lady. <laughs> old lady no here's the best part because she and i mean like she's 70 dude and she was driving aggressively now at it's this a little old lady from pasadena at this point I, I see it's an old lady i'm not mad anymore i'm impressed right yeah. so i smile at her and she flips me off and the bitch takes <laughs> off dude i'm like you <laughs> what the hell dude <laughs> Uh, I was like, I was like, salty old lady. I, I was like, like smiling at her, like, oh hell yeah, yeah. you drive it. She just fucking, she that's just took great. Her off. Like, All right, you whatever, probably dude. cut her off. You didn't even know yeah. that's what it was, and she was probably riding <laughs> your ass that's after. Right. That's she was trying to catch up. Yeah, to you, you probably to cut her off, off, and then she was whatever. pissed off the whole time. <laughs> whatever, I still like her. A badass lady. Yeah, yeah. What, what are you gonna do? She's got places to be, dude. Anyway, so do you guys have any special talents that nobody knows about? I read an article today. Made me think about this. Well, no. Katrina, I actually asked this question the other day. I literally. I just, mean, I can juggle. Sometimes people don't know that, which is. Oh, I didn't know weird. that about you. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. No, okay. I mean, I I don't know when I picked that up, but I can get up to like four balls. You know. Wow. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Two in each hand. I'm a multi-ball um, <laughs> handler. What about you, you, Adam? Do you have any well, specials? Okay, so someone asked me this question the other day. I'm looking for it right now because I just I was like, you know, I don't think I have any special talents. At least not that I think of. And I was talking to Katrina. I was texting her back and forth. I was like. Hun, do I have any special talents? And she said, laugh out loud. And she sent a bunch of stuff over. And I was, I didn't think they were that talented, but I thought it was pretty funny. I'm trying to find it in my phone right now oh, okay. because I'll, I'll, re well, I'll remind you while you're, looking, why you're, why you're telling me yours. While you're looking for it, I was just reading, uh, I was on Facebook. This article pops up. <laughs> I can burp on command. Have you guys ever heard of a guy, a guy by the name of Joseph uh, Pujol? Joseph Pujol. 
I don't think I've heard of him. He was no. quite famous in 19th century France because he could suck water up his anus. What? And then spray it out. Yeah, he, he was a performer. <laughs> Can you do that? He was a performer at the Moulin Rouge. I and, mean... and his his name was Le, Le Petomain, the fartomaniac. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't believe you if I didn't see it firsthand. Like I think I told what? you about my brother's uh, hidden talent and ability, which we never really talk about because I don't want to embarrass him all the time. But like, Bring, we talk about kids. It now. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about it in front of a million people. It's fine. Yeah, he's he's an, he's so, an adult, now. so he could just suck it up. He, and then- so his whole thing would he would like he would lay down on the ground and he'd lift his legs up. So he had like this perfect arch with his ass and his, his butt in the air, right? <laughs> And then you would literally <laughs> hear it. You'd hear the air just. Oh my god! Bro. And then he would just blast. Boom. Your brother's gonna. And I was you, like, dude, we would die laughing, right? The worst part was, and I believe I told this a long time ago on the podcast, but we had this decorative uh, trumpet that my <laughs> parents had on a coffee table like this. You did, tell and us that. and uh, so it, I'll just retell it again. But it was there. And uh, we had somebody over, and they were just kind of like uh, talking. Trick. They grab it, and then, we're, you know, they're just kind of being silly and started playing it and everything. And I saw him play, and I was like, no. <laughs> so we all just started dying laughing because I know where that's been. He get, the guy got pink eye afterwards? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, 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 that's so disgusting. Yeah, yeah I found it. Right, right. Right, so, it? so I, I, this is something. So when Katrina was gone, this came up, and I said, do I have any worthless – do I have a worthless talent you can think of? She sends back to me, I have a long list, laugh out loud. What? Yeah, I said, liar, name one. She goes, your brain is a calculator. What you? What are you talking about? When someone is calculating something, you respond before they get a calculator. You have, a be- you have beautiful writing. All letters are the same size, useless. You make a bed like you were in the army with tucked corners. It's beautiful, but who cares? And she goes, I can go on. So those are her you examples. You do have very nice writing. Yeah, I didn't think I, it's all right. I don't think it's that nice. It looks like a girl's writing. I think I she has terrible attention writing. That's, to your writing. I'm going to have to Yeah, uh, she says all the, all, the let, all the letters. That's got to be the most opposite uh, thing about you and I. Yeah, And that's uh, what opposite with oh, Katrina. I, Katrina I has the handwriting. worst handwriting. Does she really? Yeah. The Not worst. as bad as mine. Uh, it's up there. No way. Yeah, she'll take notes. And, uh, and a lot of times I'll look over and I'm like, you can't even read. I know you can't even read your own shit. <laughs> Like, how do you do that? I don't know That's if you like see like me, but I would, I would uh, cross cursive with just regular, uh, what do you call the regular writing? It's just, uh, anyways, know. but uh, <laughs> I would, do, I would, it would merge them Printing, together. Yeah. Printing. I mean, it's Printing. not a cool talent like being able to blow a trumpet with your ass. I think that's, that's like a, really that's cool, a real really talent. Yeah, like, that's- writing with cute letters, tucking a bed in and fucking, you know. I mean, I can't like, like, like shoot a bow and arrow with my toes or anything. I've uh, seen people do yeah, that. No, that's my, cool. my handwriting was so, I used to get hammered by it by my teachers. It was actually a point of stress. Really, it was a stressful <clears> issue for me in elementary school. And finally, my fifth grade teacher said, just write in all upper caps. And from then on, that's how I wrote, all upper caps. And yeah. the, 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 so it's actually legible. The, the yes. Yeah. The, yeah. the lowercase ones are just smaller are uppercase letters. From, yeah. And yeah. from that day, that's how I've always written. But you guys have seen my handwriting. It's Try a, writing a cursive Z. Atrocious. Yeah, oh, really? Not good. No, <laughs> for, forget about it. I have, <laughs> I have the absolute worst. Anyway. Yeah, so, awful. Adam, I wanted to ask you, um, we did the episode with Dr. Stephen Cabral. Mm. He tested our mineral oh, content. Oh, I'm so excited about this. He found one of the things that was most remarkable, besides the fact that we all had mercury, which is a little alarming. but the, yeah, the No the, STDs. No. <laughs> I don't think they tested that yeah. with oh, the good, hair. Good, good, good. But the, the one thing that was really cool was- because you always talk about using um, Ned's Mellow and yeah. feeling it right away. And you, uh, if you listen to you know, the, episode, the show for longer than six months, you know Adam always says, you can feel it. Maybe I probably have a magnesium deficiency. It showed up yeah. in your hair test. Well, it was wild that I'm still low even after like consistently doing that. So which just makes me go like, wow, if I'm still low, I feel the impact of when I take that at night. What would you have before? Yeah. What was my levels like before? So he's got me now. So he told me that I should take it twice a day and he recommended not in the morning. So he said, go like afternoon time. And then, and I just started this. So I'm only on like day two or three what right do you now. Notice? I mean, so far so good. Like I feel great. I mean, I already, like I said, when I take that, when I take the net at night, it is like, Game changer for me. Yeah. I mean, they, it, it, what is it? 60% of, of the population is deficient in magnesium. So there's 40% of people that hear me talk about that. And they're like, oh, yeah. whatever. I tried it. It's worthless. Okay, well, yeah, 40%. The other 60%, I guarantee it will make that yep. kind of an impact. Yep. So it already does make a huge impact. 
So the last couple of nights, it's been good. Now, because I'm, I think I was probably getting, uh, you know, some better than none before. It was already helping my sleep tremendously. So I'm not, I'm not sure how much more I'm going to feel by doubling it, but I'm going to double it no matter what because I'm still low. I yeah. mean, and he's telling me to do that, but I really can't wait to get everything else all balanced out yeah. because I had, I had several things that were out of balance, and I haven't done the stool and the blood test with him. Going to do all of that. You're doing I'm, all that. I'm doing everything. I have I have them ordering it for all of us. So yeah, I want us I'm all the stool tests are. I hate that man. You literally have to poop in. Yeah, like no, I'm not excited stupid, about it whatsoever. You mail it. Balls out of it. Or? No, no, you no, you don't do that. Okay. You, it, but you mail it, and you have to. You know what they tell you to do before you mail it? You put it in the fridge. So literally, <laughs> someone so could gross. open your fridge. Yeah, there's disgusting. a paper bag. What's in here? Yeah. Don't the, get that. The part that like everything. What was really uh, interesting in to here. me was as he went through each one of us. Obviously, I'm paying attention mostly to what the stuff he was pointing out with me. It's almost every time he would talk about, oh, if th this level is deficient right here, here's some of the potential side effects. Like one of the potential side effects is all skin stuff. Yeah. And that's my thing, right? My, my psoriasis is like my, my, my nemesis. It's my thing that I'm always working on, yeah. trying to get better and util utilizing everything I can and always trying to make my diet better. So I'm really excited to try and get all those levels balanced out since every single level that was off for me one of the side effects is skin issues. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that if I can get all that balanced out, do the other two tests with him, that maybe I can actually see That'll some, be so great. some real dramatic. And it's good timing right now because ever since COVID, my psoriasis has been the worst of my life. I wonder, so yeah. I, two, my, two theories I would have on that. One is how did it affect your immune system? There's been some research to suggest that the, that COVID um, triggers autoimmune issues in people, kind of makes it worse. Uh -huh. And the second thing would be, I wonder if it depleted some of those nutrients in you more than normal and re replacing those nutrients like you are now, how much, how, maybe that'll it's make so a huge difference. It's so weird, dude. I wanted to ask you about that because like, was there anything about uh, joint pain and like ache? Because like my back was just a problem for the last few months. And and this was after I, I had the Omicron and, you know, and recovered from yeah. it. It was, didn't last very long, but what lasted was my back pain, dude. I had it like for a, like a couple months. People, people would say that as well. It's so weird. Yeah. Kind of this long lasting inflammatory uh, response. So I don't know. It's interesting. I know in my, well, by the way, in Ned, in the mellow, there's a form of magnesium called magnesium three and eight. That even if you don't need magnesium, it crosses the blood brain barrier, and it's been shown to improve uh, cognition and cognitive performance. So whether you're low or not, even the magnesium three and eight, you, you'll notice some. You should notice some benefit. For me, what was interesting was how my copper and zinc were off. Yeah. I need more copper. One of the side effects of low copper is uh, losing pigmentation in your hair. Now we both share that one in common. We do. Yeah. Now here's a deal. Over the last like. Five years, it's accelerated, and now I'm even getting some white arm hairs and chest hairs. So I'm like, dude, I know. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? So I'm I'm starting to supplement with the what he recommended with the copper. Yeah. So, but I'm, it'll take longer to show up, right? Because my hair has to grow out. So yeah. how how cool would that be if my hair gets? That'd started? be interesting. Yeah. We're all no, I, I mean I haven't been this excited to do so. I mean the there's it's quite the regimen that we have coming, right? So I, I'm really excited to stick with it. Yeah, we're doing the heavy metal detox stuff too. The was it chlorella? Broken cell chlorella and um, <clears throat> cilantro, cilantro. Yeah. And I, I've just I've heard so many incredible things about um, Cabral. Everyone that's worked with him that I've sent that way is just like it, they've come back with like life changing stories. So mm. and you know I ought to ought to do it myself. I haven't I haven't been able to solve my psoriasis thing by myself. Mm -hmm. And so it's time that I get somebody like him to actually try and dive into it yeah. with me and see what happens. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to oh. add, bring something up. You brought up on on the show, I don't know, a few episodes back where there was a, there was a, a, a Gallup, I think it was a Gallup poll. It was a poll on the percentage of people that identify as- Oh, yeah. The younger, the youngest group right now has jumped in the 20 percentile. Yeah. So- And the next group after that is like less than half of that or something okay, crazy. Okay. So it's, it, was a, it was a survey of 12,416 U.S. adults conducted between January and December of 2021. So it's Americans who self-identified as LGBTQ in 2021 by generation. So the traditionalists, these are people born before 1946- 0.8%, so almost mm -hmm. nobody. Baby boomers who are born between 1946 and 1964, 2.6%. Gen X, which is us, that's 1965 to 1980, 4.2%. Millennials who are born between 1981 and 1996, 10.5%. 
And then Z, between 97 and 2003, 20.8%. Yeah, more than double, right? Right. So this this brought up this debate, and it actually uh, was on Twitter, and I posted something about this. It was a great discussion as to whether or not sexual orientation is malleable through uh, culture, environment, you know, that kind of stuff, or if it's entirely genetic. Um, now, this would, this would suggest that there's some malleability there, right? So- I posted this and I got lots of comments and then someone posted a study. I did not know that they actually did a big study on this where they looked for genetic markers for people who identify as uh, who, as being a part of that community. And they found in this large study that they could account for about 34% of uh, you know whether or not you're gay or bisexual or lesbian um, through genetics, which means that leaves a large percentage due to your environment, right? So I think like everything behavioral from humans, it's a mix of both. But it did stir up a lot of controversy mm. because what that brought up was some people said, well, first of all, if there's a genetic influence, then what are the, what's the, the, the morality of people saying, well, then let me genetically modify my kids so that they are or they aren't. Mm. And then other people came on and said, well, they should have never done this study because now they're going to blame culture on this or whatever. So it started this huge, which is silly because I think it's just good information. Interesting. Really interesting though, right? Really, really well, interesting stuff. Also, yeah, I'd like to see too in in, in terms of um, children and, and how, you know how malleable they are and like what kind of information they're exposed to and like definitions and, and um, you know, things like that. Like what that looks like in terms of that contributing and being like a yeah. factor, like how high of a factor is that versus, you know, like, just because of information has changed so much over the years and promotion of lifestyles, it's it's definitely shifted quite a bit. Yeah, somebody said on the on the discussion that was on there that um, well, it's because people are afraid. Yeah, that's a weak argument. Come, I do. I so I think that that's, play, a, that's a weak argument for the the doubling. Or, you can attribute some of that. Hundred percent. I agree. Yeah, one hundred. I don't think it's all of it. Yeah, and, no. and and definitely if you're comparing, you know, 1960 to now, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I I believe that, but I don't buy the generation jump of doubling like no. that's no way i don't agree that i think that it plays a role absolutely. but i don't think it plays the, absolutely i don't think it's all of it i think it's silly to think that it's not malleable when you consider the complexity of sexual behavior among humans because if you really look at it break it down 90 something percent of the sexual stuff you do is not to procreate it's has nothing to do with procreation so yeah. Definitely sex is to procreate, but the majority of the sexual stuff that humans do is not to procreate. So, and it's very complex well, and people can find lots of things as turn-ons or turn-offs or whatever. And it's very different. So I think it is very, absolutely very malleable. What's that uh, cartoon, Big Head or uh, what's the one where they, oh, they're they all going through puberty? Big Mouth. Big mouth. Yeah. It's just, to me, it's just like, it's so confusing when you're in that period of, of life. And yeah. like you're, it's so impressionable and like you get imprinted uh, at certain parts of your life. So it's like, I don't know, like to me, it's, it's a lot of it is, um, what you experience kind of developing and going through that process. Yeah. And there's wow. studies that show that trauma sometimes plays a role. Right. Um, environmental factors like uh, chemicals. There's some evidence to suggest that that may also. Play I mean, a I role. think it's so. It would be so naive to think that it's not a nature nurture thing. Yeah, it's, it's both. It has it's to be, yeah. I mean, just like everything else is. Like to to, to assume that like if something is oh this is just nature. That's it. That's just yeah. how it is. Yeah. Or to think or or to think it's just nurture. There's mm -hmm. no way that there's, there's not a biological difference in in, in all of us. It's like anything else, there's nuance all over the yeah, place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So. Since you brought up that controversy, I have to ask you guys: and what what is your opinion on what's happening with Disney right now? Have you seen what the CEO came out? I Doug, think they're, I think they pull that article up with the C, the CEO comes out. I believe I, I think wanna, they made the stupidest business they're decision. They're going to lose a lot of money. Stupid, and not not because I agree or disagree with them. I don't care about that. I think if you're a big company, and unless you're perfect, do not poke that kind of a fight because the fight that they're poking in particular, it had to do with the, the bill in Florida, which literally states that uh, administrators, teachers between preschool and third grade cannot discuss uh, or teach uh, sexual orientation or gender theory or that stuff. Yeah, like, I'm down it. with that. Which, hey, I, I, majority of people when they're polled and they understand the actual bill, they agree with that, okay? Yeah. But anyway, here, that's not the point. The point is Disney came out and opposed the bill and took a stance. Here's why it's a stupid business decision. 
because Disney is not perfect at all. And so now what people are pointing out is, well, you guys have, uh, you guys do lots of business in China and they're imprisoning the Uyghurs and they're putting them in, in, in these camps and they're sterilizing them and they have all this oppressive policies. So how could you, po you're not consistent. So, right. and I think that's a, a big lesson companies are going to learn it, that they want to come out and say something because they think it's cool. Shut your mouth because you're not perfect because you're going to get picked apart. And now Disney's getting picked apart. That's what's happening right now. They don't, they, they, they look like- they Are we watching, is anyone watching their stock and what's happening? Because this just happened, right? So the, the yeah. executive came out and now, Doug, are you reading the article? Because I thought I heard that the, they came out up to oppose the Florida thing. And then she went further to say that going forward- That was a different, that was a conversation. This I think was that a, got one executive, I think. Yeah. yeah. Lady. Was, I think it was the main executive, no? She had like a pansexual- child in the uh, transgender child. She said 50% child. of the content, the target was to to produce 50% of the, t of the content for the LGBTQ um, crowd. Something along those lines, which... Yeah, okay. at least 50% of its regular characters by the end of the year. By the end of the year. Okay, like if that's... If that's you're, that's a business decision. The market will tell you if that's well, a good that's idea. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, what the response is. Because uh, as a consumer, yeah. you could say I don't like it or I like it. That's yeah, your that's choice. The thing. Yeah. yeah, you're a business, and that's your decision. But I honestly don't. We'll see how it plays out. I don't think it's going to play out well. I don't think it's going to play out well because uh, well, it depends how they present it. it. Because if it seems like they're over sexualizing certain situations to push that, I don't care if it's. I could be straight. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, if it's my, if I have a four year old, five year old watching it, I'm like ah, I don't, I don't yeah. necessarily think this is. Well, stock isn't doing so well. So we want to, yeah, but what the, what stock is doing well right now? Yeah, it's kind of tough. To, yeah, but that's a six month. Doug's looking at a six month run right now. Yeah, I know, but I mean, yeah, but, there's a year. Yeah, I mean, go five years. They're run. on a downward trend, not an upward. Everything trend. was crushing in the, uh, last year. Let's go five year trend. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, five year trend. They're gonna be. Yeah, but still, they're almost back down to where they were five years ago. Yeah, well, this is the pickle you get in though, as a company, and you try to get um, an agenda and try and like move forward with trying to shape culture instead of just doing what you do well, which is, uh, you know, make movies and and content that's you know, <sighs> yeah. well, in, neutral. In in Disney's defense, um, we we are in a a weird fucking time that you're damned if you do, you're damned if you do. You're right. You know, it's you're like. Right. Yeah, and so you know, I, people demand. But, but we know like, we want to know I mean, your stance. I'm, so, I'm so glad that the four of us don't give a fuck. Mm, yeah. <laughs> said, right, and I'll burn true. this motherfucker down before I let somebody tell me what I have to say or do. But we're also we don't have we don't run. Okay, we didn't inherit a you know forty billion dollar business no. that you're responsible true. for whatever Disney's worth. You know, I know they're in the billions of dollars, and so. You know, imagine that. Imagine that we're we're the executives of a forty billion dollar or whatever it is. Maybe Doug can fact check me since I just keep throwing that number out. Uh, business, and now we are we are hit because you know. And if you take a, a percentage, say you Bruce brought up the generation coming up, twenty percent identify as yeah. part of that community. You got twenty twenty percent is a, a a loud number of people, yeah. especially when that that people dominate the social media. Yeah, yeah. That, those so if you looked at who is on the TikTok platforms, who's on Instagram, yeah, it could appear Facebook, disproportionate, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And if and if and if twenty percent of that generation is identifying in that category, and they are eighty percent of TikTok and eighty percent of Twitter and eighty yeah. percent of well, even if it even if it was just ten percent of your employee force, you know, if you have twenty thousand employees and two thousand people, that's right protest that's right you know you could definitely influence. so imagine the the feel of that as a company going like god this i is still think you're right i agree with you but i still think you you're better think long term you're, you're better if you don't because you'll weather the storm yes because now what they've done is they've opened themselves up to severe criticism all over the place here's some more inconsistencies okay during the pandemic right so they're super like eh, florida is evil florida is bad right during the pandemic, Disney World was open two weeks after the pandemic started and crushing and people were working there and still making money and employed. California Disney was shut down for what, a year and a half? Yeah. yeah. People out of work, out of business. So so that looks kind of hypocritical, right? The way that they do business with China seems extremely hypocritical. Remember the NBA did the same thing. The NBA made this big like, we're against depression, blah, blah, blah. You can't even say the word China in anything, any negative sense in the NBA, yeah. or they'll block it, right? Because China's such a big consumer of theirs. So you just open your, unless you're perfect, you need to be quiet, in my opinion, as a corporation, because you're just going to get destroyed. They, they look really bad now. They're going to get picked apart by all this imperfect shit that they do because they're- Yeah, but how do, you, how do you remain quiet to when you get 
put in the position like what I'm saying. Like, so I, I get, would, I, so I get not coming out. So I get your point of like, okay, I'm, we're not going to come out and say anything about, uh, um, you know, the what's his name in Florida, a DeSantos, yeah, or DeSantis. DeSantis or whatever, right? I get like, okay, you're 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 you know stepping in your own shit by doing that yeah. to your point. Okay, so don't say anything there. But what do you do when two thousand of your employees are revolting because they don't feel they feel like they're they're underserved in your cartoons? Wait, I would do first off. I think it's the way you start you you start the culture, and you literally say we are a non non political company, and we will never make political statements. Um, and that's the way it is. And if you're hired, that's what you understand. And if they do that, you say sorry. It's our policy. We don't take any stances whatsoever. So you can choose to work here or not. I think you might feel a little pain initially. But you're gonna feel way more pain later on. Now they're now all of a sudden Disney Disney was never a political company. Yeah, they are now a political company. I mean, oh, everything is. I now. mean, are we? Yeah, I was just gonna say, are <laughs> we is, ever gonna have like content out there that's devoid of agendas and politics? I know it's so exhaustive. I know, isn't it ridiculous? No, it's impossible. I, I, I always get so excited when I see a movie and it's just a movie. Yeah, it's like oh cool, it's a story that yeah. you know made its way to completion, and then the, the end. Yeah, but the truth is about you, you say that because it, it resonates with you or you enjoy it, but then somebody else is going like, oh my god, that is so a right wing fucking uh, movie. It's like you can't win yeah, right now. Normal right now. is right you, wing, no matter yeah. what. You, <laughs> no Weird. matter no matter what, it, somebody on the other side is going to even if it's not political, somebody is going to make it political. Yeah. That's the that's kind of like oh by the way. Speaking of political and more controversial stuff, who is your comedian you introduced to me to, Justin? That uh, Chris? Oh, Chris DeStefano. Yeah. Yes, no relation. He's so no funny. Relation. Yeah, he is really good. And I have I just he's started wild, I just started following him, and he came out and he he's done a couple things on. Of course, the Will Smith and Chris Rock thing, right? Because everybody is talking about that. And his he went on this rant, and he goes like, "This is the greatest example of white privilege I've ever seen." <laughs> Why? It's just Will Smith is white privilege. The fact, <laughs> the fact that people's you, heads just yeah, yeah, explode. The fact that a man could walk up and slap another man in the face and then sit down and then receive a reward 15 minutes later and be celebrated and honored like that. That is the greatest example of white privilege what? I've ever seen I don't, in my life. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand how that's white privilege. <laughs> exactly. That's he's being funny. He's just, yeah. he's just being. He's absurd. being sarcastic. Yeah. It's, of course, it's not white privilege, yeah. bro. He's black. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? So, did, did you hear? Did you, you hear that string of wild tweets? Like, oh, oh it was so, so you know, good. I fucking fell. You out know, my Chris chair. Rock is doing a com comedy tour and right he, now. He's crushing. Yeah, standing ovation. And I love and the it. price of his tickets like tripled. Like a good champion, dude. He 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 definitely has handled it. Like now, a did you guys see the 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 picture that? It was circulating on the internet that seemed to show a close up of Chris Rock's face, the part where he was about to get slapped, and it looked like he was wearing like a pad what? on his face. Like, dude, that's not uh, true. So, see, so they actually went. They actually figured that. Oh, this is either a bad Photoshop or whatever. Hilarious. But it was like conspiracy theories Bro, went crazy. You know what? I and again, I started out with that in our first conversation about it. And I'm just like, I started checking myself after that episode. I'm yeah. like, I gotta take in some less uh, conspiratorial content. Yeah, I should probably back <laughs> off a little bit, like, because it just y your brain just kind of goes into that mode, like, what if, if it's so shocking because it, it's it was so yeah. out of the ordinary. If you play Dark Side of the like, Moon backwards when the slap first yeah. hits, all the way till he gets his award, I mean, like, what, the what's the agenda here? Because everything's an agenda. Yeah. Like, what is the agenda here? Why would they? Do I mean, that? Chris Rock supposedly is not pressing charges. And if the Oscars don't do anything uh, as far as uh, repercussions for what he did, I still stand by that they, they, there's something behind all You're of it. You're just hard-headed. That's all it is. Well, I mean, if they don't- I've conceded finally, but yeah. Uh, I'm not, dude. I'm not. If they if those things happen- Now, if the, if the Oscars come out and say, can't, can't have it, or the, even if they do something as simple as, hey, next year you can't come. Yeah. Like, it, it, like so, they, they have to do something, right? Yeah, I know. mean, could you uh, if if that everybody's would, waiting for him to do something? It's it's crazy. They have to, or they're in on it, or they're 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 getting so much benefit from I it. I don't that know how you can do this with this. It's this come up with this conspiracy theory and then believe it so hardly when anything that Justin and I talk about, you're always like, oh, because you, you guys are talking it. about it's, fucking because we've given aliens no. and buttholes and weird <laughs> shit, dude. No, no, I'm no, talking no. about no. something. We what I'm talking about aliens and buttholes. What together. I am talking okay. about is actually very logical. Very logical. <laughs> you are a media company which puts out bullshit all the time and it is known for lying, is known for doing deceitful shit. You have a you have a community that is extremely tight of people like that. Your ratings have been dying for the last 10 years. You're getting your ass kicked by social media. It yeah. is not far-fetched well, to say let's stage whenever money is a motivator, doing, yeah. I, everybody I is doing drama to get attention. Bro, and, Will Smith, we want you to destroy your just, career for the uh, Is it destroying his career? 
it's gonna it's not good. You don't it's, look good. Oh, okay, well I you mean, show me lost, you show me one sure. me, you show me one metric that shows that this is not uh, even beneficial to him. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. But that, I so, think it's a, and I'll and I'll concede to that. We'll see, right? I'll concede because you're yeah. right. If he, Will Smith is the biggest loser so far, he is the biggest loser so far. But in in a situation I think like him that, and Jade are gonna get divorced over. That's what I somebody think. always has to take a hit in a situation. I like think that. he's gonna I be mean, like, damn it. I look stupid and my wife abuses me and that's why. But I, did I remember that. you saying like, where is it? Like there was, there's lots of people promoting what he did. Like, yes. They're out there. And I was, and I was watching a couple interviews of somebody on there. Like, I can't believe, you know, Chris Rock would say, I'm like, he's a comedian. I can't even believe that like the reaction of like a simple joke Dude, like you know that, what I, you know, like, give me a break. Did, yeah. Joe Rogan did talked about it. I loved his take on it. And then I thought to myself, like, could you imagine? Someone went up to try to slap Joe Rogan, just get spin kicked right to the solar plex. He went Wrong up guy. there thinking no, like he knew no ramifications were going to happen. Yes, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Well, and I, I'm still surprised that Chris Rock didn't respond. I know. I don't know how you don't hit a guy back if he gets well, slapped. I, and even if you don't, you like you don't. He was so dude. Throw he was a punch so shocked by it. Like though, how how, how did he not even shove him, or how yeah. did he not even get in a defensive like fighting stance? Like, have you ever been slapped? Or, or if you're a comedian, oh, yeah. or if slapped. you're, or if you're a comedian Good and time. you get slapped like that, your best weapon is your mouth. Yeah. How do you not fucking double and triple yeah, down after that? Like you hard. come and embarrass yeah. me on TV, and I'm a professional comedian. I am going to rip your family apart oh, now. Yeah, yeah. Like if I, if you got me right physically, and I yeah. can't get you, and you yeah. embarrass me like that, and my my craft is my mouthpiece. Yeah. Like I'm going to crucify you when you go sit down. Totally. Like I'm gonna and let and, and by that time, if he were to get up again, I would. If it's not staged, yeah. you got to think he's gonna get Let's tackled. Rock and roll. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, I, don't I don't know. know. I will. We'll see how everything yeah, plays I don't out. Know, but if, dude, because I, you know, there's a part of me that's like, maybe he just he felt bad, like delivering it. Maybe he didn't know, like the certain. But it's like at that point, I mean, of course he knew. That's why he threw the joke. I know, but, but it, that's the, the alopecia, to me, that's bro. The, come on, it's yeah. fucking. It's not cancer. No, you I know mean, what I'm saying, come on. It's that's it's, it's a, and even <laughs> cancer is not off limits for comedians, bro. Oh, no, it's yeah, nothing's it's off not, limits. Yeah, they, nothing they is off limits. You could go that. cancer. You could say AIDS. You could do race. You could do set. You could do everything with comedy. Yeah. That's well, the whole like, I'm just like trying to think about his his psychology. It, like as that happened, you know, it's like it's my boy that just did that, and then he's just trying to process it. You know, I, I don't know. know. Yeah. But usually, yeah, they have a canned response for. I'd rather for get, I'd rather get punched in the face than slapped. Personally, I feel like if you get slapped, you're like. How does I feel like Will Smith needs to get embarrassed even even oh, more? He's right already there. embarrassed. Well, so. I mean, look what's happening to now. Like, if, if he is definitely what I what I will say is this: like, whether it's hurting his career or not, he's he's, he's the, butt, be the of butt of all of everybody. Yeah, he's the butt of all jokes yeah. for the next at least two or three years. You know what I'm saying? So he's for sure going to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. it would have been cool if he did more like a cool move instead of a slap. Speaking of celebrities, dude, I can't wait to show you guys this. What? Uh, it's a workout that um, a celebrity go workout. ahead and pull this up, Doug. Yeah, somebody sent it to me. It was like, can you guys analyze this and tell me exactly, like, uh, give it a rating, you know, this workout. Uh, and you'll see Britney who's Spears? Yes, Britney Spears. Oh, that's oh my, my girl, God. dude. Why yes, are you going to put her on blast right that's now? Our girl. Oh. <laughs> what is she doing? What is she doing? Like, I just want to see if we can like the, the relevance of this, man, you're wealthy. Get a good trainer. Brittany. You know, do you know that she was, uh, she's, she doesn't look bad though. She's pretty <laughs> fit though. Huh? What uh, are you doing? Dude, though? I call this, uh, 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 meth head mobility. Meth head mobility. <laughs> That's what I was going to go. Well, with. You, know, you remember she first came out back in the days when people were asking her about how she stays fit. She did something. She used to do something like 8,000 sit-ups a day or something crazy like that. Yeah, that was like yeah. her, her regimen. I'm sure that was real. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> like it just week. looks so weird. I'm mean, like, I don't know. I guess, I mean. It's a terrible, she's it, she's it, doing. Things are kind of sped up and whatnot, but you it's know what just this, so silly. You know what this makes me think of? This is what happens when you're a girl, a young girl, and you get so idolized for being sexy and attractive, and then you start to age, and then you don't know what else to do. So, I don't know, bro, I don't know if this is a girl thing. I just think this is a stupid people Well, thing. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I, mean, I only have to do with sex. It, it tends not to happen to men as much as what I'm saying. She got so idolized for being so hot, so cute, so whatever. Now she's getting in her 40s, and she's still trying to ride that. And it, like you see, Madonna, Madonna still tries it. I like, mean, to me, we we see we, we see examples with this with with like you guy, identify so guy, guy with celebrities her. that end up doing crazy amounts of plastic surgery and steroids like yeah. crazy into their 70s and 80s, like hanging on. That's true. So yeah. hard, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just sad still trying to hang out with the 20 year old girls. I feel like that. that's like, worse. Like some of those uh, male like lead actors that get the. The face totally, the back, bro. You know? There was this totally. Guy, there was this guy that used to work out at one of the gyms, I, and I'm not going to say which one because people will know who he is. I know you guys have seen him. 
and he had so much work done. He had jet black hair, obviously dyed, and he'd come in, and his face didn't move, and he'd, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. And he'd walk around. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, bro. There's a lot of it's just money. age. You know, whatever. like, it's okay. You, that's one of the lessons you learn through aging, right. I think, is acceptance. You have to accept that it's like it's inevitable. Yeah, but you have to assume that th- those people, most of them, they were probably in the limelight at one point. Of course. You know, that's almost, what I mean. Almost you, always. Like, could. you identified so strongly. Yeah. That it's like child actors when they go through puberty and all of a sudden they're not popular anymore yeah. because their voice cracks or whatever. It's sad. It's so sad. Yeah. Hey, real quick. Uh, one of the sponsors that we work with, one of our favorites, we've been with for a very long time and that's for a reason. Organifi has quality supplements, most of them plant-based, all organic. One of my favorite products from Organifi is their green juice. So there's a lot of value in getting a lot of variety of plant foods. Okay, This may be not so true when it comes to Proteins coming from animal proteins. But when it comes to plants, a lot of variety can provide some pretty good health benefits. And the green juice does that, right? So it's got lots of green superfoods, tastes really good, and makes you feel energized, helps with digestion. It's a great product. They have many other products like a plant-based protein. They have a red juice for energy, a gold juice for relaxation. Go check them out. Head over to mindpumppartners.com. Click on Organifi. Use the code MINDPUMP for 20% off. Here comes the rest of the show. First caller is Andrew from Tennessee. Andrew, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. Good. All right. Uh, First of all, thanks so much for having me on. Uh, I've been listening to you guys for about a year and a half or so. Uh, Love all the programs that I've run, Anabolic, Strong, and Powerlift. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for everything that you give us. So really appreciative of that. Um, So my question is based around uh, my hand and feet health, actually. So I'm a percussionist and music teacher from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, For years, I've always kind of joked that if my hand were to fall off or something like that, I'd be out of a job big time. Um, So after years of playing, I've been playing since I've been in second, since I was in second grade. um, And throughout school, I played in jazz band. And the thing in jazz band is you're always playing so loud. I remember some some rehearsals and performances I'd come out and my hands were like shaking um, just from the repeated uh, hitting of a hard surface. Um, so my question to you guys is, what can I do daily for my hands and my feet um, to ensure healthy healthy hands and healthy feet? Is oh, there anything I can do we daily? We have a perfect program for you and no. you don't have it yet, so we'll send it over no, to you. No, this is great. So by, by the way, um, if you lose a hand, you're not totally out. Was it Rick Allen? Wasn't he a, he was a, he was a drummer, right, for Def Leppard? Yeah. Wasn't he, that had, the guy? he had one hand? He did, one arm. Yeah, yeah, one arm. Def yeah, Leppard's drummer? Some robot I didn't know that. Too, one man. arm. You know, you know I, I was, so I actually, trained but, a, yeah. I actually trained a drummer a long time ago, and it was this. there was only two times I ever had someone tell me I need you to train me so I don't get a pump when I'm doing my, <laughs> which was weird to me. Everybody wants a pump, but no, if you, obviously yeah. if you get a forearm pump while you're drumming. It's a performance inhibitor. Yeah, you're totally screwed. Maps um, Prime Pro, man. Yeah, That's Prime it. Pro's got some good wrist um, and finger uh, mobility movements. And then also in there. for foot, foot yeah, and ankle. And foot and ankle. I, and just pra- I would just practice those daily, and that'll help uh, quite a bit. It'll make a big difference in terms of maintaining the the health and stability. Don't overdo them. Okay. So I want to say mm-hmm. this because how, let me see, let me ask you this. How often are you playing, um, your, your, your instrument drums just about every day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I would start slowly with the mobility work. I would do five to 10 minutes every single day. See how that feels. If that feels good, then you can add another session, uh, to the day. Um, uh, but start with one a day, five to 10, and you're not trying to like go crazy with it because what will happen, what can happen is if you get sore from the mobility work and then you go play the drums, your risk of injury goes up. So start real slow, but that Prime Pro has got some yeah. great- Real light intensity um, gotcha. because then eventually once you create these rituals and habits of just doing this continuously, um, you, you could get into something like uh, with the rice bucket drills where you know, you're know you kind of moving sand, moving rice around uh, and, and getting a lot of that articulation out of your fingers, your wrists, uh, just to build even more strength with a little bit of resistance. Have you ever seen that before, by the way, the, the rice bucket exercises? We've talked about it maybe a couple times. We have so. it in MAPS OCR. Yeah, mm-hmm. so so what, what you do is you get a, a bucket, uh, like, you know, like a paint bucket, fill it with rice, dry rice, and then you stick your hand in there, yeah. and then you open your fingers, close your hand, you, right. you pinch move your, grip, you, you grab like yeah. a good handful and make a fist and, and grip it really tight, or you push 
um, the rice out with your fingers splaying your fingers out. So there's Move really cool around. drills like that. Yeah, that will help to kind of reinforce and and strengthen around uh, the fingers and the wrists. I would put most of my energy though towards Prime Pro, the mobility work. Totally. On. I mean, that's because totally. you're you're getting a lot of you know exercise Explosive, with yeah. yeah with the drum the drumming and stuff like that. The For big sure. thing would be just to keep uh, keep it healthy, right? Range yeah. And, and, yeah. and work those in ranges of motion. Uh, and that's what you're doing in Prime Pro. So uh, Sal said it right. I would just do that and try and time it like right before you go to play the drums. I mean, that'd be that could be your kind of ritual warm before. Up. Yeah, your warm up before you start. You do your wrist cars and you do your ankle stuff, and then that's what gets you going. Yeah. And that's right in Prime Pro. There's a there we we broke down a, every major joint in the body. Uh, and then just go to it and then you'll see, uh, there's, you know, a handful of movements for each joint and just start practicing yeah. a couple of those before you, uh, get playing. Andrew, do you get any, sure. any, uh, tightness up in the shoulder and neck area? Uh, I do. Okay. I do. So that's common, uh, obviously with drummers as well. And if your neck and tight, uh, excuse me, if your neck and shoulder start to get tight, mm -hmm. uh, you could run to an issue where the nerves that run down the hands, start to lose a little bit of their ability to conduct, obviously to, to, to fire muscles and your hands can actually fatigue. In fact, I've actually gotten people who have what they thought was carpal tunnel, uh, to get better from loosening up their shoulder uh, and their upper back. So in prime pro, there's also shoulder and scapular mobility stuff. Do that too. I think that'll benefit you too as a drummer because you know better than I do, but being able to maintain, you know, good positioning in the upper and the neck shoulder area it makes a big difference in terms of your performance as well. Sure, sure. Is there anything that you guys would say like, hey, watch out for this, maybe don't overdo it? I, I, I do a lot of like farmers carrying and last year I was doing like, I, I would, I like to challenge myself and go on like a mile walk with like 45 mm -hmm. pound plates, obviously stopping every, every now and again. But is there anything you would say like, hey, watch out for this? Yeah, the, um, just don't overdo anything. I mean, that's fine so long as it's appropriate. So right. always consider this, that whatever you're doing in your workout, you're still going to play the drums throughout the week. So if it's going to hamper your ability to play the drums, uh, then you may be, you may have an issue. So and scale to that, right? That's so, it. Uh, so that's the I think that's the, the the major mistake would be to not really do that, and then all of a sudden you go for a mile. Like I would say, hey, let's start with a hundred yards, mm -hmm. and then two hundred yards, and then work your way up. If you do that, it's probably not going to hinder your your playing so much or your workouts. But if all of a sudden one day you just get a hair in your ass and you're like, oh, I'm going to go for a mile walk, and you've never done that doing farm, and mm -hmm. and then you're fucked up for four days afterwards well that's why you overreached and so nothing wrong with challenging yourself just remember the goal is always to do as little as possible to elicit grip. the most amount of change i haven't heard yeah. that saying in a long time i know ever. like two weeks <laughs> i do like it though, oh, the from your ass, so I yeah. Yeah. yeah from a postural perspective though like doing that to reinforce uh you know those shoulders to to be pinned back and down um that would be the last thing i would consider is our wall press uh just to, mm. because you're seated so much and you're in this kind of protracted yeah. shoulder position you're banging the drums um you know to get that core activation to keep stabilizing the spine so you avoid lower back uh pain yeah andrew who's your favorite drummer of all time man i had a feeling this question would come up um <laughs> so i started playing because i loved neil perk yeah that's the best that's my favorite yeah. absolutely yeah, that's he, the guy that's the guy, my man. guy Good yeah, deal. Yeah. Rest in peace. I, I actually showed his uh I show his showed his videos to my kids the other day and it was just my son was like Yeah, he's a champion. How in the hell is he moving that way? I have no idea. Pretty crazy. Yeah. All right, well, yeah. cool, Andrew. I think that'll that'll definitely help you out. And if you don't have Prime Pro, we'll send that to you, okay? Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You got it, man. Keep banging them skins. You know what's funny is uh is that what you say for the drums? That's what you do say. Banging yeah. the skins. Yeah, it's not just yeah, uh, I've uh, never heard a that. creepy saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not being sexually suggestive. Uh, yeah, not at all. Banging yeah. the skins. You and him in the hair in the ass, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, it's this I so it, it, it was so unique when I would get clients that would tell me something that was like the opposite of anything I experienced. I had a drummer once, he's like, listen, he's like, uh my my forearms get really tight when I play and then I can't play very well. I'm like, Oh, you get a pump. And he's like, yeah, I want to not do that anymore. I'm like, um, <laughs> I love that. I love that. What the dude. hell am I going to do? Oh, that's so opposite. I, had I a, was the same way. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. How do I stop this? I had a motocross yeah. racer say the same thing. I don't want to get a forearm pump. So how do I train that? I'm like, oh shit. Everything I ever learned was how to get a pump. Yeah. <laughs> how do we train from that? But no, it's, it's a good question. I like getting these, you know, people who do different things because one of the beauties of, of exercise, especially strength training 
is just how individualizable so it is. Oh, it's so different. You can make it so individualizable from person to person based on what they want to accomplish. What a great example. Like such a, a, a different way of approaching strength training for him than we would for maybe someone else. If you want to pump your body... And expand your mind. There's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Next question is from Braxton from Kentucky. Braxton, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks so much for having me on and for all the great info you guys put out. Uh, sorry, I'm in my car. I'm on my break at work, so hopefully I'm coming through okay. Yeah, we got you. Um, Great. So I've got a two-part question. Um, I am 10 days away from my first um, physique competition. It's not the first time I've prepped, but it's the first time that I've, I've competed. Um, I'm coaching myself. So I was wondering if you had any tips or strategies for peaking, because I don't really know uh, what the best uh, strategy to deploy is there. And then uh, the more important question is, after this show, what do you think the best style or best type of program for me to follow in order to most efficiently uh, put on as much lean mass as I can after the show. Oh, yeah. J Justin's yeah, the expert I'm, on I'm peaking. For this one. <laughs> for sure. I'm the peak master. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. No, obviously, it's, it's going to be you, Adam. So help him out. Yeah. Well, so here's the here's the thing that I'm concerned about. Are you all are you training intuitively? Are you eating intuitively too, or are you actually tracking? No. So I have a very high degree of control with my nutrition. So yeah, I, I have been training intuitively for a while, but like I weigh everything that I eat. Um, measure everything out with on a on a scale. I don't even use cups for anything. I weigh everything by the gram. Okay, so I mean the 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 strategy to peaking is really the carb loading part of getting ready for the show. So it really depends on kind of where you're at carb wise on a on a regular basis. So do you know like how many grams of carbs that you're consuming on a daily basis right now? Yeah, for the majority of the prep, it was around 200 grams. Um, at two weeks out, I lowered it down to 100. Okay. Um, and then I was planning on bringing it below 40 for like the last week. Yeah. Um, the only thing I've really noticed is, um, I've noticed some like digestion issues, uh, since I brought my carbs down lower. I don't know if that's normal, uh, but like the foods themselves haven't changed much, but I, it seems like I'm, ha my, I'm having more digestive yeah, issues. Well, you probably lost before. the fiber, right? So there's uh, most of the fiber you're going to get is coming through carbohydrates. You reduce that much and then all of a sudden you get, uh, you, you have issues with digestion or your, you know, constipation. So that's really normal. Okay. Um, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You see a lot of guys will take uh, supplement fiber, uh, around that time, especially if they, if they have an issue with that. So that might, I, you know, what always solved it for me was like a, a, you know, two cups of blueberries or, uh, you know, some, a spinach, big old spinach type of salad, things like that would, uh, would always get me going if I had an issue like that. Um, carbs mm -hmm. are kind of low. That's a, that's a, if that, how's, how, what's your size or how much you weigh? Like, so I'm waking up around 181, 182. I'm six feet tall. Yeah. Um, with the skin, nine sight skin fold, it's measuring <laughs> the nine sight measures me like 4.8. I'm just like, that's not right. Uh, so I would uh, more conservatively estimate somewhere between seven and 8% body fat. So leading up to peak week, I am trying to get my carb intake as high, relatively as high as I can based off of where I need, I, I don't want to put on body fat, but you know, get to the place where I'm pushing, you know, for my size, I was pushing, you know, 400, 450 grams of carbs. Oh, wow. Um, and I was also pushing about two to two and a half gallons of water leading up to peak week. And then in peak week, I, I cut down like you did very, very low carb for like that week leading up. Uh, and then, uh, two to three days going into the show, I begin to refill my body with carbohydrates. And okay. then uh, that beginning of the week, I start to taper my water down from like two and a half gallons to where I go all the way down. And I, each day it's a little less down to two, then one, one and a half, one to where I'm doing about a half a gallon, which is different than some competitors. Some competitors cut water completely. I think that's ridiculous. Your, your mm -hmm. Half of your muscle is water. So you'll mm -hmm. get a very flat look if you have no water in your system. And I, I think I always think it's mm -hmm. such a silly strategy for guys that do that. So, but mm -hmm. I do want, I do want to have my water intake high. I do want to bring it down a little bit. And then the amount of carbs and water is what we're loading the, the, the two to three days leading into showtime. And honestly, this is, 
uh, such an individualized science. I mean, I still claim to this day that, you know, of the six shows I did in, in my time of competing, I never brought the best version of me. And that's because I was always trying to figure out what was the perfect amount of carbohydrates right. with the perfect amount of water for that day for the show to bring the best looking physique. And so part of it is a little bit of trial and error of, okay, if I 200 is what is considered a high day of carbs, I've been running real low 50. I'm going to use this by the way, we're just going to make some numbers up to give you an idea, right? right. So you're, you're running 200 grams, you cut all the way down to 50 for the, the leading week up or whatever. And then we start to refill, start to feed more carbohydrates. So it goes to like from 50 up to like 150 on the first day leading up and then 200 on the next day. And then maybe the day of the show, I'm going to push like 300 to 350. So higher than you normally would. And then I'm also going to have and, and do the reverse with the water. The water's coming down as I'm loading up with carbohydrates, if that makes sense. And, and, and yeah, I remember that you, makes sense. Adam, I remember you saying that there was a carbohydrate source that you found that did that the best. So, okay, now that's, we're getting you more detail, right? So I, mm -hmm. I played yeah, with- I'll, I'll take all of it. Right, so so what type of carbohydrates made a difference uh, on, on show day? Like I noticed like if I did something like that was low glycemic, like sweet potatoes, it wouldn't, uh, it's, it's so slow, slow digesting that my body would not like load up and fill, fill out really quick. And so all day long, even though I was eating the same amount of carbohydrates as I would on, let's say another show where I did rice, it would never like mm -hmm. completely fill my muscle bellies out. Whereas if I loaded with white rice, the white rice would actually fill me out. So different carbohydrates okay. will even fill the muscle bellies out differently, right? This is a, such a different game than when we talk to somebody who's like just trying to lose weight or, or yeah, build right. muscle. Like yeah. there's, there's it's a lot some, more specific. Yeah. So I, um, I, I, I'm glad that you said these things too, because I was thinking of going in a different direction as far as like zero carbs and then load up as much as I can um, with like sugary, Ooh. uh, simple, simple carbs the day before with controlled, like controlling the calories, not just going nuts. And then also, like you said, just completely cutting water. Like I was planning on going like two gallons a day for like five days and then like maybe just one bottle the day before. But, and that's just what I'd heard and what I've been reading about, but I like the idea of tapering down better because that yeah. sounds sacred. To me. Yeah. And not only that, and then back to your, your idea of what, so uh, another mistake I see guys do is exactly what you said is to like all of a sudden mm -hmm. load these different, I like to stick with the carbohydrates that I've been doing my whole prep with because I okay. know how it's manipulating my body. I mean, when you start to get, and you know, this as you get really, really lean, you can, mm -hmm. you can tell like how different meals affect your body differently. And so yeah, yeah. I, I, Seriously. I, and, and when I started to learn like, Oh, okay. When I, if, if another example, I, when I put, um, an avocado in that, that meal with rice and chicken, uh, it, it, it made an impact on how much my muscle bellies filled up versus if I had no avocado mm -hmm. in that meal. So there's like mm -hmm. little things like that, that you can start to tweak. But if you go so different than what you've been doing prep, it's really hard to get a, a read on what's yeah that makes out. sense because then it's like an unpredictable variable that you have Ex exactly with. Yeah, so I, i've had i've had rice in at least two of my meals a day every day for the past like 10 weeks it, so and i know exactly like you said like if i have a big like meal with rice the night before i feel as full as a house the next morning like when i'm working out exactly. so that makes a lot of sense and and that and so i would stick with i loved white white rice is so easy to control easy to measure um it feels so good on the digestion for me like so I would use white rice. It's just white rice. It's just a matter of how much based off of how you and play with that. You know what I'm saying? And before right. I always tell guys before they go and girls before they go into peak week, we should have kind of practice peak week. So have a day where you run. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Three or four really low carb, like you're doing like say 50 grams of carbs for like three or four days in a row and then do two to three days of kind of loading the body back and find out well, what, how long does it take to get loaded all the way back up? And I've made mistakes in the past thinking that one day was enough for my body to get reloaded back with carbohydrates. And what I found mm -hmm. was two days after the show was my best look. And what that told mm -hmm. me was, oh, wow, I didn't give, I didn't give myself enough carbohydrates and calories to refill all the way out. So you want to kind of play with those variables before yeah. we get into that peak week. So, you know, have a, at least a good idea um, of, and I love this stuff, but because it's, it's difficult. Well, you just said <laughs> makes so much sense to me because I'm thinking about a night about four weeks ago when I had been like really consistent and I had a really bad craving and I totally caved and I got this like full order of cinnamon pull aparts from Papa John's yeah. and just crushed, just crushed them. <laughs> um, but what's funny is that not the next day, but the day after 
is when I felt like I looked my best. Yeah. Like, cause I had a normal day of eating after that. And then the day after that is when I was like, wow, mm-hmm. and I can really tell. And you probably just needed that amount of carbohydrates to fill completely out. So the, yeah, these are the things we play with, you know, right. Let's do this. Let's get you in our, our private forum. Are you, are you in there now or no? I'm not. Okay. So Doug's in, I'm going to have Doug uh, give you access to that. Thank you. We actually have several competitors in there, even though it's not a All right on. heavy competitor conversation there. If you start the conversation up, there's actually quite a few people that actually have taken themselves through prep. There's even a few people that I've prepped uh, in shows mm-hmm. in there and it's a great community. Share with them what you're experiencing, what you did, what you, what you're trying to figure out. And it's a great community yeah. to do that with. Thank you. That yeah. sounds like an awesome resource. Cause I don't have anybody in my life around me that does this stuff. So it, it's nice to have people to talk to. Absolutely. Get in there. And then if you ever want to ask me specifically, just tag me in there. Now, Braxton, you asked about what workout you should do afterwards. I love maps and yeah. Ma- um, maps anabolic so- post, not a lot of volume strength focused. You're going to be refeeding yourself. Uh, I feel like it'll give your body the ability to recover from all the crazy mm-hmm. training you've been doing. Plus in mm-hmm. combination with how you'll be feeding yourself, your strength should go through the roof with that program. Yeah. Um, I'll definitely, I'll absolutely trust you guys. Uh, if that's what you suggest. Um, my only concern was with, with the, you know, three workouts, uh, because I do go to the gym. I do really enjoy going the six days. Uh, but at the same time I've been training intuitively for like the past two and a half years and haven't really made improvements. So I really want to find a, I really want to just try a program and stick and adhere to a program do, um, and see if that'll help do me break maps through. anabolic, do three trigger sessions on your off days. Okay. So you're still doing something. Okay. And then if you want to go to the gym, you can do mobility, a little cardio. There's nothing wrong with that, but I would go for right three on. trigger sessions on all the other days. So you're going to be doing something seven days a week and then three foundational mm-hmm. workouts a week. That is going to give your body the ability to recover from your training, plus feeding yourself more calories. You should gain some serious strength. Okay. Right on. All right. We'll send that. Let's send maps and ball to him as well. We'll send that to you right now. Oh, right. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I do have one final quick question. Um, the I keep seeing Mesa amplifiers in the background. Who's the guitar player? In my <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's Justin. Yeah. Justin, right yeah. on, man. Right yeah. on. I just got an EVH 5150 the other day, and I'm oh, super sick. stoked I about it. I played on those. Those yeah. are fun, too. Yeah. Love that, that that tone that comes out of there. Good That's deal. Sick. Thanks for calling in, Braxton. Hey, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. No Good one. Yeah, keep it metal. He's got something in common with both of you guys, huh? <laughs> we felt left out. Bodybuilder and rock star. Oh, I, I bet he likes pizza. Huh? <laughs> huh? Hey, guys. Yeah. You know, the whole, like, anchovies? The, the whole uh, peak, like, ready for like for a show yeah. is such a weird, like, imprecise science. It's so strange because you're literally trying, because your, your, people don't realize this, right? Your body is constantly regulating water and fluids and electrolytes. So to try to manipulate it, to time it for a day or a couple hours, whew, that is really hard. Well, the, the hardest thing I have about communicating is it it really is, um, it doesn't align with our training philosophy. Oh yeah. No, like it's not I, like a fitness it's, health. It's health fringe. Yeah. yeah. So I always, you know, I, I always want to say that before I start to explain to people, because I don't want people to think like, this is how I recommend people train. Or if someone's yeah. listening and they're like, oh, I want to be ripped looking like a, a bodybuilder. And so I should take that advice and do it. It's like, no, you won't <laughs> notice this unless you're hella shredded anyway. Yeah. And, and, and we're not, we're not doing what's healthiest for us at all. I mean, at, at that point it is purely trying you mean not drinking water. To, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're purely trying to manipulate water, carbs, sodium, calories yeah. to to achieve a a look that's going to look great on stage and photos it is not a uh this is it's not sustainable it's not what you should try and look like all the time it's very short lived for the moment uh, and it's very, very individualized. So like it's it, you know giving him that advice I just used a bunch of generic numbers to give him an idea of what that would look like, but I, you know, I have no idea. Like everybody's body responds differently to like how fast their body breaks down the carbohydrates into glucose. You have no idea if he's slow, fast in the middle and where he, what he was doing before. So all those things matter. But I, it's also what I liked. I mean, I thought that because it was difficult, because it was fun to kind of tweak with it and everything like that, yep. I, I really enjoyed that process. Our next caller is Josh from California. Josh, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Um, so quick, quick, I guess too long. Didn't read for my question is, uh, I'm in 33 years old. Um, I'll turn to 33 this year, five eleven, about 200 pounds. Uh, I've been in the Marine Corps for about 14 years and they recently did a body composition study. Um, 
they did the DEXO scan, they did an impedance, they did a body scan. They were saying the DEXO is like the gold standard uh, for body fat percentage accuracy. And I measured it at about 24% on that. And I was looking to try to get down to 15% just personally. Um, and in addition to that, uh, back in like December timeframe, uh, I took a metabolic test. Uh, it's like, I don't know, it's called MetaCheck. You breathe into this tube for like 10 minutes and then it estimates what your uh, metabolic rate is. And mine said it was just slightly above average. And this was after listening to you guys kind of deciding to probably needed to do a bulk to maybe increase my metabolism. So I'm not sure if I brought it up or if it stayed the same, if it went down, I honestly don't know at that point, but um, I've been running maps performance. I'm in phase three right now. Um, I've been eating at about 1800 calories um, with 180 grams of protein. I think I was in my, my mess, 180 grams of protein, um, 135 grams of carbs, about 60 grams of fat. And I talked to a nutritionist and she was like, everything looks good, but just recommend that I try to bump it up to about 2200 through uh, adding like vegetables and fruit and also add cardio on top of what I'm already doing. So I was just trying to see, just when I started listening to you guys, I wasn't so sure about how that sounded. I just want to get your, your input and your take on it. Okay. So this is your, the calories you're eating now, are they getting you, are they have, is it making you lose weight? Are you noticing the scale move or you're getting leaner? Um, so I def I got leaner from when I did the meta check. Uh, I was a little over. I was probably about two hundred nine when I did it, um, and I'm down hovering around two hundred, but I can't seem to break back down. And my the problem that I have with that is uh, for the for the Marine Corps, my height uh, and age. I have to be either no more than one hundred ninety seven pounds, and my body fat can't be taped at no more than nineteen percent. Okay, so. Yeah, I'm above those, above those right now. You have pretty reasonable goals. Um, I I would end the cut for a short period of time. Maybe do like a, a one week mini bulk, mini bulk or maintenance. So maybe your maintenance okay. is twenty five hundred or twenty six hundred calories. That's what I would aim for for about a week, and then you go back down to the cut because uh, your metabolism's adapted a little bit. So and what you'll notice in that week is you probably won't gain any weight. You might gain a little bit of water. You might you'll notice more strength and performance. And then when you go back okay. to your cut, you should it should kickstart things again. What we don't want to do is just keep cutting calories every yeah. time you hit a plateau because you're already at 2,200 calories. You're you know you're down to 200 pounds. You know it, we could end up in a situation where you're down to like you know 1,700 or 1,600 calories for a guy your size is really low. So I would go min, I would go increase the calories for a week or two, then start cutting again. And that's just a more effective strategy anyway, right? So if, if you're trying to get leaner overall. The ratio would be something like four to one. Like for every four weeks of a cut, I would do a week of maintenance or a slight bulk and then go back to the cut. It, it tends to preserve more muscle and prevent that metabolic adaptation where your metabolism slows down. How long, how many weeks have you been on the, the calorie reduction? How many weeks has it been consistently that you've been following that? Um, so I, I haven't listened to you guys for a while and I've heard you about the undulating calories when you, you talked about it. So, um, consistently i've probably been in it for like four or five weeks there are some maybe days i'm a little bit higher like overall than the average 1800 calories a day um but yeah i'd say it's probably been four or five weeks oh well that, that's good then that's a good that, that. that's a good sign there's a good timing for you to do exactly what sal said because you're you're probably exactly what he said is a right around this is the reason why by the way we phase our programs in three to four weeks like that is the body tends to start to adapt to whatever we're kind of doing to it around that and we're trying to always be ahead of one step ahead so that's probably all you need is like a, a, a slight mini ball keep in mind uh if you if the the mini bulk, uh, you know, make good choices, eat a little bit more calories. Don't give it, don't, uh, you know, don't just eat whatever you want. Cause we tell you to go on a bulk, eat just a little bit of surplus, make good choices. And if you got good programming that those couple together, you could technically get leaner and add calories. I don't think people realize it. if you build, if you add, let's say Especially we during we, the endurance phase, right? If we, right if we increase two to 300 calories into your diet, and you put on two pounds on the scale, but both pounds are muscle. You you will get leaner body fat percentage wise. So right. um, so that's not a problem. So don't be afraid to to throw that little mini bulk in there, and then then you can go back down to cutting again. And uh, I I don't know if you made this clear. I know the nutrition said maybe do car. Are you doing zero cardio right now? What's your cardio regimen look like? 
No, so um, my wife actually got me into like whether walking on the treadmill or a stair step right now, read like a book on my phone while I'm doing that. So, like for example, yesterday I didn't think I had the time to do all of the um, uh, not the fundamental days for for performance, but the like the uh, stretching and whatnot. Oh, so the I mobility days. The, yeah, mobility days. Sorry, I hopped on the uh, the treadmill and the stair stepper for like forty minutes um, to be able to just knock that out. I was going to try to combine the two, but I didn't have access to the uh, the weight area uh, at that time. So I'm not doing. Sometimes I'll combine uh, mobility plus cardio, um, or just do other stuff like whether it's playing with my kids or you know I don't know how much calories like actually drumming burns. Sometimes I do drumming and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not doing zero cardio. I am at least, if not doing the mobility sessions, walking on the treadmill. But I typically don't walk on the treadmill during the fun of the, uh, the foundational days. Okay. Yeah, the, the 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 bump in calories for a short period of time should help with what you're doing. I think you're just you hit you hit a normal plateau that happens usually four to six weeks when somebody cuts their calories, and it sounds like you cut about five to six hundred below maintenance is based on the weight loss and you know that you've discussed. Okay. Yeah, described. So I, I would bump the calories up to maintenance or slightly above for about a mm-hmm. week, and then go back to a four week cut. Four to one ratio seems to work best for most people when it comes to to weight loss. Okay. Now is performance the program that you guys would recommend right now, or is it something oh, yeah. like, cause yeah, you definitely yeah. want to build muscle. No, no, no. Performance um, is fine. And when you're done with that, you can go maps aesthetic, but it's performance is absolutely fine. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I bought your, uh, your bundle that was like hit performance and I think it was, uh, prime and strong or something. So strong, I those, strong you know. would be great too. Oh yeah. Strong yeah. would be a great fall. When you're done with mass performance, go right into strong. But what's great about those okay. two is there's a lot of unique exercises that a lot of people don't do on a regular basis. So the novelty of that's going to be great with you increasing your calories. So, I mean, hopefully that those additional calories get partitioned over to building muscle and you'll be fine. You also still have room too to actually, and you know, we get like we get labeled as like the anti cardio guys. But you know, if we're if I'm trying to get you down to a certain body fat percentage and we're trying to get it in a certain time time frame. I would love to, I would do a bulk like Sal was saying. And then when you go back to reducing calories, you may also introduce three days of, you know, 30 minutes of, you know, list cardio in there and just be consistent about it. Pair it with the mobility days, like you're saying. So do a half hour of Stairmaster or incline walking with your mobility uh, and be consistent about that while also going back on a calorie. And I bet that'll help you know, break you through that plateau. Okay. And then, so if I get down to that, would you guys recommend just kind of like maintenance for a little while or like going into a, to try to gain muscle? If my body fat percentage gets down to 15%, like I'll have, definitely have room to, to spare as far as my height weight requirement. Goes. When you, when you get to your goal, right? When we get to the place you want to be a body fat percentage, and then it's kind of like, okay, where from here now, that is a perfect time. I think to transition into a new program, like strong. And, and then, okay. and, and really, since you're at the place you need to be body fat percentage and weight wise, just focus on getting strong, mm-hmm. focus on, mm-hmm. on kicking ass in the program and being strong and being fed, not trying so much to cut or bulk, you know, try okay. maybe that like when you're at the place you want to be body fat and weight wise, I would love to see you switch to a new program. So you have a, a novel program and then also try and transition you into a place of more intuitive eating where we just make good choices. You eat when you're hungry and kind of see where you're landing calorie wise and maybe check back in with yourself every other week or whatever to make sure that you're, you're not way under or overestimating what you should, what you're eating. But uh, that would be a great time in my opinion to start to transition you into trying to get towards a more intuitive way of eating. Okay, cool. Sounds good. So, right. so strong. Is it a lot different from anabolic, or is that different? very different? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very different. Very different. Okay. Very different. Yeah. I haven't looked at the program yet. So oh sure. yeah, you'll love it. Yeah, you'll love it. Okay, cool, guys. I, I appreciate your your help. Looks like I'm uh, pointing in the right direction. So hopefully it will work out. Awesome, Josh. Excellent. Thanks for calling in. All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, that's uh, the the very common plateau right around that time, right? Four to six weeks. If a, if a deficit isn't massive. Just get out of it. It's funny. They did a study on that and they, they had groups of, they had two groups comparing them. One group had what they called diet breaks, which is what we're mm-hmm. kind of talking about. And the other group just went consistent with the deficit. The diet breaks group lost more fat and preserved more muscle. Yeah. Even though the calories were all controlled, which was interesting, right? Yeah. There's a lot of value to undulating, uh, you know, your uh, diet like that and, and really giving yourself kind of a new uh, stimulus uh, so your body can respond, especially when, inevitably when you hit those plateaus. Our next caller is Eric from Pennsylvania. Eric, what's happening? How can we help you? 
How are you doing, guys? Thanks for having me on. I love your content. Love the show. So I'm a middle school health and phys ed teacher, as well as a high school wrestling coach. And in my middle school, we've had the same students getting in trouble all year long. Um, after school detentions, suspensions don't really seem to work much, especially at this point. So I came up with an idea and my, my principals are really supportive. So many of them thrive in phys ed when they're active, which is not really a shocker. Um, so if a student gets in trouble and they're assigned a regular after school detention, my idea was to give them another option, which would be to go through a workout with me during the last period of the day, which is basically like a study hall. Hell yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Like they, so basically it would get them out of sitting in a room after school uh, when they're in a really bad mindset. And during the workout, I would talk to them about their behavior. But if they didn't take it serious, there was any attitude, then they would also serve the detention. And then if my idea was then if they can make it maybe about a week after that, maybe I bring them down to the gym and they can pick an activity like shooting basketball or something. So my question is, how would you structure the workouts? I, I want them to experience some discomfort, but I also want, <laughs> don't want them to develop yeah. a really unhealthy relationship yeah. with exercise. And also the parents will give consent because I got to cover myself. You know, mm. if they claim I put them through something really grueling, you know, it could go down a bad road. <laughs> yeah. I, I love this. I this love it. So I, I remember, didn't you DM me about this earlier? I yeah, Justin, I sent you a DM. I figured if you coach in high school kids, you could maybe relate a little bit. Oh, totally relate to this. And I love, I love that um, they're behind you with this uh, approach. I think that it's a really cool idea, idea. And it's something that, uh, like you said, you want to make it fun. You want to make it inviting uh, and have a good experience out of it. Right. So they, it, you can kind of build and foster a good relationship. Thank with fitness. you for saying that. Cause you know, Eric, uh, we don't I, want it to be punishment. No, I think the mentality could very easily, and I get this, right. You're like, I'm going to, they're here cause instead of detention. So I'm going to beat them up a little bit. That only works when the kid wants to be there. Like you got a kid, like you're a wrestling coach. You got a kid who wants to wrestle you can push them in that way and it, and it it makes them stronger and motivates them. If it's, if it's already a punishment, they're already like, I have to show up. Yeah. I think the strategy should not be to punish, punish them, but rather make it in like something that they enjoy. Like, all right, we're going to lift weights. Uh, what muscles do you guys want to build? Let's do bench press. Let's do deadlifts. That's I would Let's do overhead press. That, that's what I would do. I'd actually only focus on one or two lifts and yeah, make the whole it. teach the whole, them the entire technique. Yeah. The yeah, whole hour the would be all around. And then what'll happen, they'll love it and they'll yeah. want to come and then yeah. you can take it away. Yeah. Hey, listen, you, you act up. You're not, I'm not training you. Right. And it, you exercise has got, so you know this, Eric, you're a PE teacher. Fitness has got so many, so many lessons to learn within it. Like they're going to learn that they're going to try something today. Then they're going to see you the next time and they could do another rep. Guess what? You're not the same person. What do you mean? You did one more. It's not the same body. Your body's different today. Oh my God, that's pretty crazy, right? Or I'm sore. Well, that's good. Here's what happened to your muscles. Let's get you stronger. Let's have fun. Here's the, we're going to work the, the beach muscles right now. You know, you have a good time with them. They're going to show up and be like, man, I love working out with, you know, coach Eric. I love lift them weights. Like this is really cool. Well, and it gives them structure and purpose. And then you have something you can take away as well. Because I, I, I think if you treat it like a pun, which they're already going in there to be punished. And if it's yeah. on top of it, a punishment anyway, as soon as it's over, it's over. They're done. They're never well, yeah, going to come back. And you may turn them off of yeah, working out. Totally. And I think too, like a few things that you can actually test out and not make it like, like, so for instance, uh, the, the hand dynamometer, um, for grip test I've used with the kids and they just, they get really into it because they want to beat the numbers, you know? And it's like just something that intuitively they grab it and they see it. And then you kind of give them a chart and show kind of where the averages lie and whatnot and where they're at. And it's really interesting because they get insight like, Oh wow, I thought I, I would be stronger than that. Yeah. Or, you know, you do a pull up, they can only do one and they're struggling through the whole time. Um, just like simple, very simple things that you can kind of challenge them and be like, I could show you how to get, you you know, maybe two more uh, the next time we come in here. Well, yeah. think, of, think of this, like squatting, deadlifting, uh, patience, technique, uh, strength, acceptance. Dis discipline, acceptance, control, uh, improvement. These are all the things that you can get from uh, that type of a movement. Those those are all teaching lessons for a, for a kid who's being disciplined for in there. So, I mean, if you're really gangster, you have the ability to like 
know what kids, why they're in there and what, what that kid needs to work on being more patient. That kid needs to be more awakened or worked on discipline. That kid, whatever their, their thing is, you can speak, speak to them through right. the training. And I think that would be incredibly yeah. valuable but is to give if, lessons. If focus through. Is, is the issue, right? Like yeah. you can make some, a challenge of them having to hold a position for a, you know, a long amount yeah. of time. Well, it's and just, difficult. And you know, they're just, like uh, they, those are talking points between yeah. sets, between sets. I'm talking about why it is so important to stay in control. Yeah of yourself and have discipline and your body is reacting in a way naturally and you have to mentally fight against that focus. It's very much so like your reaction that you wanted to do in class the other day and speak out loud. It's like being able to know that it's a natural thing for you to do, but what right, what's right to do. You know what I'm saying? I would find ways. Yeah, I would find, I would find ways to take uh, the lessons in coaching and teaching these, these complex movements into those lessons that I'm trying to teach yeah. them about behavior and why they ended up in this place. Eric, the most success I had training uh, kids um, who, who were brought to me by their parents. So this is the closest I can get to what you're talking about. So these are kids who, you know, mom and dad are like, you got to go work out with a trainer for whatever reason. So they kind of don't want to be there. Is right. I, I made it enjoyable, but I also had structure and I also let them know that I wasn't like I, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to get pushed around and there's going to be some discipline here. So it was a balancing act. It wasn't like show up, joke around, ha ha ha. And you leave. It was like, it's a good time, but now it's time to get to work. And then it's a good time. And now it's time to get to work. And I would talk to them in, in language that was like, if it was a kid, a guy coming in and once I got, I felt him out. Um, and I knew like kind of what their motivations were, they would show up and I'd be like, you want to get, let's get those delts big, you know, and like, you want to get Jack for the beach. You know, I talked to him that way and they would laugh We'd have a lot of fun. Once they developed that good relationship with it, man, it was like they were, it was like they would, they would do anything. I had this one kid I trained. He didn't want to work out. Mom signed him up. He started losing weight, got this real, him and I developed this great relationship. And then his grades got better. Do you know why? Because his mom threatened to take away his training. Hey, you don't get those test grades up. I'm going to have you stop working out with Sal. And he's like, oh shit, I better get back to back. Well, to I imagine these kids are going to want are going to be motivated to train with them and we'll have a good experience just because I mean, at least I mean, yeah, I, the alternative I, is detention. It, exactly. Right? I mean, I've served plenty of time in detention and, and if, if the teacher that uh, you, you got know, a word for it, didn't you? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> what? And if, if my teacher, I walked into detention, let's say after school to this time and teacher goes, Hey, we can, you can either sit with your head down on the desk for an hour, like you normally do or read and study, or you can come over to the gym with me and I'm going to teach you how to squat. That it's a no brainer. Yeah, right. Like I, and I'm excited to go over there because at least yeah. I don't, have to sit at my damn desk. We were silent inside a, in detention. I get to exercise. And then you're teaching me life lessons while we're squatting. I mean, hell yes. I yeah. love that. And I think, uh, and I think that's instead of overcomplicating what the workout looks like, it's yeah. really more about the teaching lesson, which I think is your desired outcome. I mean, that's really what it sounds like. I would, like I would focus do. on basic exercises. You're going to do like two or three mm -hmm. per session and that's it. Squat, Today, we're going to do squat and overhead press, you know, next time bench press and deadlift. We're going to do rows and pull-ups, like two or three exercises. They practice them. Yeah. They do them. Um, they get good at them. And then, and then what I want you to do, Eric, is I want you to track how many reps and what they're lifting. And don't necessarily let them out. No, but write it down. That way, the next time they come in and they do one more rep, make a big deal about it. Like, holy shit, you know you <laughs> well, did. hopefully they don't keep coming yeah, back. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm assuming, they're, I'm assuming they're, they're, this is more than one time they're going to see you? Well, it's tricky because yeah. it'll be one. We have six, six days. We have a six-day cycle at school. So it's on day two okay. of, of our six-day cycle. And by the time they get down to me, it'll be about... 35 minutes. So oh, picking one or two exercises is a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. But what it can't be is they get in trouble and they're like, I don't care. Cause I'm going to go get to go lift with, you know, coach Eric. Well, well that's, you, that's you, because, okay. So the, the part, uh, the, 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 the move to make this to where they is the lecturing a little bit. Right. So that's right. It can't be just working out and having fun. You know, yeah. like I, I hey, you, you can also recruit some wrestlers out of this. To me, you know? to me, I, that's what I think to me, it's, exactly, it's, yeah. it's teach yeah, the movement, everyone kind of, and then, and then the, the, the lecture or the lesson comes between for a minute Dude, or two and then back to the movement. I, and then yeah. oh, I, I know I, you're, I know you're thinking that too, Eric, this could be a great way to oh, recruit some, some wrestlers. It's, it's misdirected energy, you know, and this right. is, I love, uh, and here's the thing: we're always looking for you know the misfits around campus, and we're trying yep. to pull them into you know sports. football and yeah. sports and and contact sports and you know difficult uh, training because it's such a great outlet to to 
express that that energy that they obviously need dude in my opinion wrestling is the best for that it's the well, most yeah, brutal super demanding fucking training and humbling you get your ass exactly kicked. right sal oh, exactly yeah. right oh yeah you, you get your ass kicked for two years basically yeah. no but you can't do shit for two years so you really learn a lot of yeah. lessons i'll and, tell you what i i wrestled at, at penn state and looking back listening to your podcast i'm 41 now but the amount of overtraining I've done in my life is yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> oh, I, I, especially uh, wrestling. They're the, they're the, oh, you need both, dude. Wrestling is brutal, and it's almost like the guys who make it are the ones that can take the most punishment. You know, yeah. it's really crazy. I really like what you're doing, though, man. I'm excited. Yeah. I'd love to hear back from you if uh, you circle back and give us feedback on uh, how how it's going, and and maybe as you start to apply it. Maybe together we can figure out some ways to tweak it because yeah. I, I really think this is a, a really good idea and a good a good totally. movement. I wish more people were thinking it's like a this. rehabilitation program. You love, it. love it. Listen, if I write if I write out maps detention, I just want like thirty three percent. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Right. Oh, we'll post that on social detention. media if you do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. All right. Thanks, Eric. Thanks right for calling. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. No Take problem, it easy, man. Right. I, I, w I wish people knew, more people understood the rehabilitative uh, value of sports or exercise. It's life changing for kids. Well, I think most life I think most parents that Especially have their academics. I think most parents that have their kids in sports understand this. They know it's that the parents that don't. Yes, that, that, yeah. may, that or maybe they weren't ever athletes themselves, and so they don't recognize how how valuable it gives them structure and direction and purpose. And there's growth. You know how many, uh, you know how many well, times I train discipline kids working that, with others, yeah, this is the problem humility, that, everything. Yeah. They think that, uh, you know, they need to be on ADD medication, you know? And it's like, no, they just need an outlet. Yeah. You know, you need, they need to go express themselves physically. And yeah. it's, it's, it pains me every time they cut a program, uh, that's, you know, they used to have where kids were able to go, you know, hard and, and figure out all those difficult things I in mean, sports. I totally feel like I could sit down in a, in a hour's time or so and list off all the metaphors around squatting and deadlifting into life lessons come on that totally. that 95 percent of the kid troubled yeah. kids that are going to come in there would learn from well, it's like then, the henry rollins book and then to me that would be all he did it's like I'm, yeah. i don't care if every time he taught just squat and deadlift the, the real lesson is what he's teaching in between mm -hmm. that's that's the real value of that is that okay instead of these kids sitting at desk i'm going to make them go into the gym I, but what they don't realize is they're gonna they're gonna indirectly get lectured from yeah, me dude, about I, lessons life lessons from the iron yes. i wish when kids got in trouble juveniles instead of sending them to, to juvenile you know like to, to you know either jail or prison or or detention or whatever they said here's your option you can join the wrestling team just don't get kicked off or you got to go play football or you got to go to martial arts here's a jiu-jitsu here's a jiu-jitsu school or you got to go lift weights that would transform kids totally transform percent rather than punishing the shit out of them making them and they just become angry resentful and there's no yeah there's nothing then, that they get yeah from. And throw them into society and have us deal with yeah, them. yeah no thanks exactly look if you like our information head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides we have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal you can also find all of us on social media so justin is on instagram at mindpumpjustin adam is on instagram at mindpumpadam and you can only find me on twitter at mindpumpsal 